They're expressive, deceptive, and they can go for a bundle at the auction house. Duck decoys. The hunting lure turned folk art form has a rich history in South Jersey shore towns. Tuckered in Seaport and Bayman's Museum works to keep that tradition alive. People in this area, starting in the mid-1800s, really were living off the land and the water. There wasn't a lot of industry here in South Jersey, but we had rich natural resources. Jacqueline Wood is the director of their Folklife Center. They were able to go out hunting and feed their family using duck decoys. And then a big industry grew up around that. It really is one of the biggest, and I think the best. The thousands of enthusiasts who travel for the annual Ocean County Decoy and Gunning Show seem to agree. Here, the birds are bought, sold, and submitted for competition. Decoys are judged on durability, realism, and how they sit in the water. And they're assessed from 10 yards away, a bird's eye perspective. Dick Jessen has several decoys he's submitting for awards this weekend. Jessen started carving as a 14-year-old from Perth Amboy. He's since migrated south and is now a resident carver at Tuckerton Seaport. It's a skill that's kind of, you know, we would like to keep alive, and that's why we have a lot of the buildings here, is to pass those traditions on. Jessen says with cutting, hollowing, chopping, shaping, gluing, sanding, and painting, the process takes about eight to ten hours from start to finish. And though he considers himself an artist, he never would have anticipated decoys becoming the collector's items they have. Yeah, I was surprised by it because I used to have some of the old ones and I used, I used them for hunting. He's not alone. Before they were viewed as collectible art, decoys were often used for firewood at the end of the season, repainted, or simply tossed, making older ones rare. That view of the floating fowl changed. In the late 60s, the World's Fair came, and Jay Parker, who one of our carving buildings is named after him, he went to the World's Fair. And the story is that when he went, his decoys were selling for 25 cents. When he came back, he started selling them for $25. Because he went somewhere where people were looking at them and saying, wow, this is amazing. Wood is a fan and a collector herself. And she delights in seeing the art form, and by extension, Tuckerton, celebrated. Our museum is big, and we tell a lot of different stories. But really what ties it all together is this idea of a sense of place. What comes out of knowing about a place is loving it. And what comes out of loving a place is wanting to preserve it. If 32 years of the Decoy and Gunning Festival have shown anything, it's that appreciation for the art form and the town's natural beauty have only grown. In Tuckerton, I'm Maddie Orton for NJTV News.